Okay, today we are going on a short road trip to a hike, a canyon, a hike, and then some beautiful sunset lookout point. Oh, I feel, I feel, I feel, I feel so alive. Okay, so our first stop today is a short hike called the Red Canyon here in A-Lot, and then we're gonna head up to Mitz P. Ramon, some kind of a lookout that's really beautiful at sunset. So uh, it's only a couple hour drive, but while, uh, while we're going on this road trip, I'm gonna share with you some of the videos we've gotten because we've gotten so many, probably 200 or so by the time you're seeing this. And uh, some of them have made us literally laugh out loud. So we wanna share some with you. Okay, hold on a sec. I'm so sorry, I should have explained. If this is the first time you've watched our show, a couple weeks ago we invited some folks to come join us this summer and asked for video applications on Instagram. Well, the videos have been rolling in, so I just want to share some with you that made us laugh and some of the potential candidates for our Mediterranean summer adventure. Hey guys, my name is Gabriela. I'm from Rio de Janeiro, Brazil, and I'm 19. My favorite thing to do is hunting down new skate parks and just being there all day, learning from other skaters and always having so much fun. My name's Evan, I'm 21. I'm from California. I enjoy making videos and I love getting out of my comfort zone. My name is Glory Anna Bootsma. I was born in Brampton, Ontario, Canada. I now live in Kansas City, Missouri. There's not a lot of ocean out here. <laughs> My name is Flynn, I'm 22, I'm a positive, outgoing Aussie dude that loves adventures. My name is Naomi, I'm a paddleboard instructor. I'm French-Canadian, I'm from Montreal, and I would love to join you guys for the summer on the boat. My name is Rafaela, I'm 19 years old, and I live in Lima, Peru. G'day guys, hope you're doing well. My name is Joe. I'm 19, I'm from Adelaide in South Australia. I'm Kirsten, I'm 21 years old, and I'm from Lima, Peru. My name is Renam, I've turned 18 three months ago, I'm from Saudi Arabia. My name's Matthew. I'm 18 years old. I'm from Virginia. I'm scuba certified. I love being on boats. I also do not wear my feelings on my sleeve. So I understand where Keith is coming from that. I'm not a snowflake. Takes a lot to get under my skin. Here's a little song I wrote. It's fire isn't such a stay on your oil boat this summer. My name is Eva Lachman. My name is Casey Kennedy. My name is Enzo. My name is Colby Parker. Most people call me Skiffy. That's my rapper artist name. Keith, Renee, Kate, Finn, Jack. There's a lot of names. I don't know good with names, but I think I'd be good on the boat. I know man, passing by. Life is good, best I've ever felt. Get me up, so in it, so where I can find myself. I feel, I feel, I feel, I feel so alive. Oh, it's so hot in here. Sorry, Joel, we're taking your car off road. No, we're not. This is not off road. Joel, it's just a little off road. It's a rental car. The fact that we had to get chains out and pull it out of the ditch a minute ago is no big deal. Unfortunately, our gorgeous Sunset Canyon view was shrouded in a big fat cloud, so we drove two hours for a disappointing view. Actually, it's not disappointing at all. What am I saying? It's still spectacular. And actually, views like this are just one of the many reasons we're still loving our time spent here in the Middle East. I tell you a story about me and you Out on the water, surrounded by the blue trying to sleep actually I wasn't asleep yet but I get up and we have no power no lights nothing so I find Keith down in a hole working on something trying to figure out what it is we're actually plugged up to shore power but he was working on something and unplugged the shore power and there was a delay or something 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 and our uh, I don't know our power is not working battery's not working 
There's a short in something, yeah? Yeah. And oh. you figured it out, yeah? Okay. Now, oops. This whole switch right here, it's bad. What switch is that? What is that for? It, it's, uh, it turns off the mains of everything. Mm -hmm. I mean, it's a safety switch and it's melted down. Yes, this one's unhooked. Okay, and that's the one I'm pulling on? Yeah. Okay. That's the one that was moving the most, at least. Okay, hold on. <laughs> it's been arcing for quite a while. Look at that. Pop right there. Oh, yeah, it's just lucky. Oh, did you catch fire? That sounds healthy. That's what's causing the yeah. problem. So now, this is not going to be too hard. I'm going to have to hot wire past this. I'm not going to have a shut off switch for the boat batteries, which is fine. I hadn't used a shut off switch in years. No. Dangerous game? Is that what you're talking about? No. Are you doing that right now? See? Yeah. Oh, yeah. That's been arcing against that because it's gotten old. You could just stop on it right now and turn shore power on and we wouldn't have to mess with it, right? Or is that not right? Yeah, but the minute we left... No, I know. I'm just I mean, saying... We're, we're going to keep getting problems. Yeah, no, I know. I'm just... The power outages yeah. and it's going to short out something that's vital if I don't fix it right. Oh, you mean here on shore power when they... Yeah, it could short it out these off. inverters. It could short out lots of things. Yeah, okay, gotcha. Call the fire. Right. Skin it back. Start fresh with that, but I don't know how I'm gonna do it because I don't have a set of cutters to cut that. I thought I had some cutters, cable cutters, but I don't have anything to cut something that big. So, yeah. That cuts rigging, don't we? Yeah, I do. That's big. Yeah, this could do it. Thank you, Kate. We're focused on candles right now. Yeah, you might be. I mean, my well-being is very important. I think I, oh, I did cut my foot. Imagine that. <clears throat> ah, come on. So I just bypassed that switch. And uh -huh. I hooked the leads back up here. Because it's sparky. Sparky. The lamp's on. The lights are on. We have power, boys. Now what? Now let's see what happens when I uh, plug it in. We shouldn't have a power glitch. Okay. Let's see if we have a power okay, glitch. Okay, no power glitch. Whatever that is. Well, the lights will all flash and everything will start beeping and going off. Hey. <laughs> Gosh, it would be so much easier if I knew how to do it and I would be able to crawl in there instead of it. I know. But I don't know how to do it. Sorry about the light. It's okay. Short power kick on? Uh, yeah, yeah. Short power's on and nothing flickered or anything. Okay. Uh, let's see. The flickers when I do this. No flicker. Nope. No flicker. There you okay. go. So that was your problem. Now let's see if, uh, let's just let that sit for a second. Now I'm going to turn off the generator. Perfect. Job. Good so job. you just need to go find that piece. Yeah, that. Good job. Then. All right, let's go to bed. Right. So we're gonna go look for this part that he just uh, took off last night, and uh, Keith is gonna share his thoughts on what. So how did you figure out this was the problem? I didn't get any film of a mm -hmm. of it flickering or of the problem beforehand. So what was happening is every time we'd put a big load on the boat, on the AC system, 
So on boats, there's two systems. There's a DC system and an AC system. So anything that has a battery in it is a DC system. If it's got a battery that recharges, it's a DC system. And, uh, and anything that has generators on it is most likely an AC system. In, our, in most boats, this, we have a, a DC battery system and an AC generator system. And I don't want to bore you with all the details of this particular electrical problem, but if you want to learn all about managing your boat's electrical systems and just about everything else you need to turn your blue water dreams into reality, hop over to bluewatercruising.com because sailing is only 10% of cruising. We teach the other 90%. And that's how I found it. And I had to think about it, though. It wasn't complicated. It wasn't complex. Once you understand there's an AC system and a DC system, yeah, then you can kind of work through that. You didn't have to Google anything or call anybody? I no, mean, I didn't Google or call anybody. I just started thinking about it because what the, the, the tell, the giveaway was my DC lights were going off. Mm -hmm. They were going off. Hmm. Why are my DC powered lights going off? They shouldn't be because my batteries are on all the time. Right. Something is shorting between that. So. Interesting. That was the deal. Very cool. Hopefully we can find that, that kill switch today. Yeah, that's what I'm looking for right and now. And then you'll uh, reinstall it, unwire what you just well, did. I don't know if I'll install it now. Oh, this is that boat yard right here. Let's see what they got here. Well, I don't see nobody here. Mm -hmm. Very open. They don't look open. So they're not open today because it's Friday. It's Shabbat or their Sabbath day. Shabbat Shalom to all you Israelis out there. What are you working on here, love? What? What are you working on? I am. Uh, you just can't get enough of working lately, can you? I can't for some reason. What's that? So this is the new freshwater flush system that we got for our water maker to help it take care of things a little better. And I just got through installing it all and wiring it. I've still got to clean up some wiring, but it's it's done. It's installed. Huh. And I'm just fix, I'm fixing some leaks. So what it does is after you, every seven days you need to fresh water flush your water maker. Every seven days? Yeah, it does it automatically on a schedule, but you can't do it with chlorine. Like right now we're putting chlorinated water in our tanks mm. from the shore, so you can't do that because that ruins the elements. Mm. But when we're out on passage, it just fresh water flushes. Mm -hmm. And we're in like Flint. Cool. And I also put, I also put this little thing on here. This is a TDS uh, uh, water meter, and so I can see water output from each of my membranes. Hmm. And so I install that, and that's pretty neat. So I can see the quality of my water, my parts per million, right there. If I need to test something, mm -hmm. and then other than that, the thing works like a champ. Cool. Hey guys, welcome to this week's edition of the Q&A. Well, I know it's been a long time since I've done one of these, so we're going to jump right into it. First question out of the box is from Lawson Roach. Uh, this might be a dumb question, but why do you let your boom out while on anchor? Great question. The reason we move the boom to the side is because there's solar panels on top of the cockpit. And we want those solar panels to get the maximum amount of sun without mast shading. It's called mast shading. And uh, those solar panels is what charges our house batteries and keeps them topped up. So we want the maximum performance for those solar panels without any shading of anything shading the uh, solar panels while we're on anchor. Great question and we appreciate that. All right, next question out of the box is from Simon Anderson. Curious to know if a monohull would feel more comfortable in choppy swell of that size. And he's referring to our passage around the Horn of Africa where we got into that 50 knot winds and the, the sea state was really bad. I think in, in a monohull, and this is my opinion, in a monohull or catamaran, when you have short, steep, short wave length, short wave periods, uh, steep waves and uh, high winds like that, and they're anywhere on the beam, you're going to have rough, rough, rough ride, whether it's a monohull or a catamaran. It's going to be a little different in the catamaran. It's going to be a little more jerky, whereas a monohull could be a little more rollier, but you're going to roll way over in that thing and snap back and roll over and snap back, and it's not going to be fun. Either one is going to be a, a rough ride. I think uh, I think the monohull probably handles it better in that condition from just a, a wear point of view because everything's rattling in a catamaran when that's going on, but catamaran's still safe and, and uh, gets the job done. But... Uh, once again, it, it, and you get in those kind of sea states, there's no protection for anybody in a boat like that. You just have to weather through it and get through it. But great question, Simon, and we appreciate it. Next one is from, um, i got to put my glasses on. It's real small. Uh, Kill a Chef 91 
you might have said before, but are y'all looking to are y'all looking at Starlink for the boat? We absolutely are. When we get in the Mediterranean, we're going to get Starlink on the boat for sure. Now, with that said, I'd like to uh, I'd like to say this to all you guys who want to go cruising and want to start cruising. If you're only going out cruising for a couple of years, you're doing a couple of years sabbatical. I would challenge each and every one of you: don't get Starlink. Don't get anything that connects you to the world because it will take away from it will take away from the, uh, the experience out there. You don't want that distraction. You don't want it for your children. And so I wouldn't do that. If you're out here and you've been out here for two or three years, or you got to make a living while you're out here, then I would say get that. But once again, remember that it does take away from the experience. It's uh, it's you know we didn't have it in the first couple of years when we first started this experience and I'm thankful that it was hard to find the internet I'm thankful that we couldn't just get on internet because it filled our days with so much more but now that we've been out here for seven years we need internet we need it for the YouTube experience we need it for uh, we have some other businesses that we're dealing with out here and and so we need it and uh, it's good it's for an educational for our children and stuff like that it helps but once again you know our kids and us we're guilty of getting on these stupid phones and getting plugged in I think these are a bane to society I think they're they're horrible I'm guilty of being on them myself scroliosis going through feeds it's, it's a horrible thing and I don't think it's helping society one bit but uh, you know we're making we're making a little bit of living out of it and uh, as long as that works that's what we're doing but uh, great question and uh, we will be getting Starlink for sure. All right, last question on the list is, uh, it's really not a question, it's more of a comment, but I wanted to talk about it. It's from Trip Vulgar. I'm a Mexican American and we like to keep family together as much as possible. There's never pressure for anyone to leave unless they, they don't do anything to help out. Even when people do move out, it's always close by and we still spend all of our time together. And when parents get old and retire, they move in with their kids. I think a lot of issues plaguing our country is from isolation from family because they, they differ in opinion. I, and I agree with you, Tripp. Absolutely agree with you. I think that is a serious problem plaguing our nation. The family is the core of, of the foundation of any society. A, a healthy marriage, uh, healthy relationships with your children, uh, role modeling, uh, you know, all this wokeness and everything we, we see in the world going on right now, it scares me because everybody's... Uh, going away from from the family and, and and there's some things about you know the old nuclear family and you know two-car garage and the materialistic side of things that I don't agree with but I do agree with family is the most important thing and and sharing those relations when it comes to my children me and Renee we had children on purpose intentionally we didn't have children because it was the thing to do we didn't have children so we could send them off and let somebody else raise them at schools and 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 play uh, playtime and daycare we had children so that we could raise them so that we could take care of them my career Renee's career none of that stuff was more important than our children and our family atmosphere and so and, and for some people that have to work I, I totally get that you know you got to make a living you got to feed those kids I mean obviously they, they eat you out of house and home but uh, we, we planned it that way so that we could focus on our children and, and yeah once again I you know the first half of my children's life I was a pretty gnarly father I wasn't a good father I wasn't really a good husband because I worked so much and I was trying to feed and feed them but looking back on it I think I could have done with less consumerism and materialism and been a better father had I had the experience that I have now um, you know we get a lot of questions when your kids gonna move off the boat when are they gonna start taking care of themselves and you know my children don't have to leave as long as they help out on the boat as long as they're a blessing to us as long as they're they're doing things for us and and uh, they're contributing to the cause. They have great attitudes. They are helpful. You know, I, they're, they're going to make their way eventually. They're going to find their passions. Um, I'm not going to push that on them. You know, everybody always asks me, how come you haven't taught Jack and Finn and Kate how to drive the boat? How come they're not navigating and sailing and doing all that? I teach, I, I think uh, teaching that kind of stuff is caught, not taught. I mean, there's certain things I do teach, and as Jack gets interested or Finn gets interested, I'll I'll, I'll, I'll drill down into the technical side of some of this stuff, but unless they're interested in it, it, it isn't going to help me to teach them how to do something because uh, they're going to forget it. They're not going to be interested in it. So as we're sailing around over the last seven years, they've picked up a lot. Should they have picked up a lot more? Probably, but that's not what they're passionate about, you know, and I'm letting them be kids as long as they can because the world's going to sneak up on them sooner or later. And with that, that's that's a, you know that's my comment. That's my uh, rant for the day. Uh, also, I wanted to pick out you know we, we bring in these kids on the boat. We get a lot of questions. You guys are just bringing all these kids on the boat so you can have hookups with your children and you can have boyfriend girlfriends. So we're not doing that at all. In the last three or four years, it's been very hard to find cruisers of any kind with children because COVID really stopped a lot of people from cruising. 
or they, they slowed them way down because they were afraid to leave. They didn't know what the rules would be, where they were going, and so cruisers didn't leave. But uh, and, and even when, when before COVID, it was hard for us to find kids that were athletic. Most kids that we've run across on boats in the last seven years have been academic children. Nothing wrong with that, but they're really not into the sporting side of things. They're not real athletic. They're not into... Um, you know, the, the athletic side of things and water sports and all the things that my kids like to do. And so that even minimizes that pool even more because there's just not that many out there. That's why we're bringing other kids on the boat. Our kids are older now, you know, Kate's gonna be 16, Finn's 17, Jack's 20, he'll be 21 this year. And and we want them to have experiences uh, with with uh, other kids. And, and that's the whole reason we're bringing kids here is so they can have experiences, they can make friends. And, uh, and for people to, to, to be able to experience this life as well, people who might not get to see this life, uh, we bring some young, young adults out here and that, that makes it fun for everybody. And it changes the atmosphere on our boat, totally changes the dynamic of the boat. Uh, and that's why we do it. You know, it's, it's not about romance and hooking up and all this stuff. I know people think that, you know, it's, it's not about that. Uh, that may tend to happen every once in a while because kids will be kids, they have crushes and all that kind of stuff, but we try to, uh, minimize that try to discourage that because you want to have fun out here you want to have a good time you want to make friends and friendships that last a lifetime and uh, and uh, who knows out of those friendships may blossom uh, a relationship that lasts a lifetime for for any one of my children and for those who come so once again guys thanks for watching the show if you like it click the subscribe button hit the like button share it with your friends hit the dislike button if you don't like this leave those nasty comments because i love them i love reading them I, the positive comments i appreciate it thank you but i like the nasty comments as always, I look forward to seeing you guys out there on the water.